Shlama Shalom. Yay. Hey, <laughs> hey uh, how'd you pronounce that again? I'm going to try to pronounce it. Shlama Shalom. 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 Got it. Yes. Shlama Shalom. Shlama is the feminine form of peace, and Shalom is the masculine. Nice. I like it. Shalom. 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 It's so good to meet you. You too. <laughs> hey, great to meet you, actually. I really enjoyed your teaching the other day. I can't believe I haven't um, run across you before then. Well, you know what? I think it's all perfect timing, right? I, I, I get so excited how the spirit like connects all of us together. Um, and I have, since we've become friends on Facebook, I have been so blessed, my heart has, with your, with your post. You continually are putting things out there and planting seeds continually like all day long so that if somebody doesn't realize we're one yet well just wait because alec martin's going to post something about that <laughs> and so at some point at the thousandth time of you seeing it it's going to register and i just i love it so thank you for what you are doing thank you for putting that out there for all of us to just have our joy filled within our heart because it's just I love, I love what you post. It touches me every single time. Wow. Uh, thank you so much. And and thank you for having me. I'm like super honored you you would let me join you and everybody that's going to be watching this and just share a little piece of our heart because it's one heart. I've just got a piece of it, you know, uh, which is nice. Well, I've been, you know, my husband and I, we've had our YouTube channel now for, uh, well, it's going on two years. I think we're about only a year and a half into it though, but um you know, it's been our voices. And so the spirit just put it on my heart. It's like, no, they need to hear from other voices, people that don't have platforms, people that haven't gone out there and put out the YouTube channels to hear what the spirit is speaking to all of us, because it is a unanimous unified message. And I love to hear how it came about in a person's life. And then whatever the spirit has put on your heart in our now for today, you know, that's, that's what just gets me so excited. And then, of course, every time somebody says something, I instantly get Hebrew and Aramaic words that start flying in that want to introduce themselves as well and yeah. be part of the conversation because they are a living, energetic being as well. You know, we yes. look at words as like stationary and I'm like, no, there are a frequency and a vibration of a living entity that is wanting to invade our space because we're one with it and it's infused in our DNA. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's all. That's awesome. I was talking to uh, Dale Allen Hoffman a little while back, chatting with him, and um, and because I've grasped a little bit of the Aramaic just through what he's you know taught, and uh, and which he's an amazing guy, and uh, and I you know I read his book and I was looking at, and I love that that Aramaic and the Hebrew also, and uh, and I love what you had to say about the two were meant to actually be together, you know. Yes. And, and uh, it's the male and the female, the, or the masculine and the feminine. And I don't claim to know, you know, nearly uh, a whole lot on all that. I, what I do know is um, I've experienced a lot and encountered a lot of things through dreams and visions. And um, I learned the art of questioning from listening to the voice within me because it would always it would always give me questions. <laughs> and then and then through the questions out you know by contemplating and focusing and meditating upon these questions day and night and these visions they begin to unfold and uh and and what would happen with me is i would um i would gain i'd have my own revelation my own custom made revelation that was mine and uh and then at the same time and this is what i really want for everyone is i would gain an encounter and, and an experience and and at first i used to say well i'm encountering god and which is true and 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 then you know as as i began to experience more of this oneness and and you know again i would gain more understanding and then through the understanding i would i would encounter more and experience more and as i experienced more i would feel more which is the same thing as belief you know, I'd feel it to be true more and more. And then through that feeling, it's like I would just know that I knew that I knew, you know, and, and, and through that knowing, I would be more and more who I truly am and who I've always been, not who I was taught I was, 
not who I thought I was according to these external teachings and occurrences that happened throughout my life, but through the encounter within yes. myself. Yeah. And, and yep, yep. And, and so I later learned that, well, I've been encountering myself. Yeah. And, and I've been experiencing myself. And, and, and I was told not too, too long ago, you know, um, we're moving into this place and it's kind of like an ascension in, in consciousness, if you want to call it that, all within. And it's this place where there is no difference between this being we call God and ourselves. There so is, no, yeah, there's just, and it's even changed, my language is even changing um, from using certain words like that to now it's kind of changed to it's, it's, it's our being. It's the only being, you know, that is all beings. <laughs> And, and, uh, and the reason, and I like to interchange all those words a lot in my post. I used to do a whole lot more lives and things, and I just really um, haven't felt such the need to here lately. Um, although I did try to get on the other day and it kicked me off and I figured, well, okay, <laughs> maybe, maybe I need to, say, maybe I need to save it for tomorrow with Carrie. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it because if it's the fresh manna that you were wanting to release, I would love to hear it. I just, I get excited to hear the revelations that are coming up because it just makes my heart full. And then when we can see how we're all interconnected, yeah. you know, that we, we, it's all, it's being released right now at the same time, you know, because yeah. we're quantum. Yeah. I, I started kind of beating this drum, I think about eight years ago. Um, I really got the revelation that, that, we're one and if we're one we're we are yes yeah, you know and, and and the way I the way it happened with me is um I wasn't really raised up in like church I would say um although my my grandparents were very religious you know they they went to church and and um gosh my grandmother's got such a she's Baptist and she's got such a good grasp when I talk to her about oneness through the hymns that they sang their whole lives and she'll say, oh, that reminds me of this hymn, and she'll sing it. And I'm like, wow, it, it's all it's always been there, no matter yes. where you're at. Yes. And, uh, and, and so I didn't really get raised up in church. My parents were uh, hippies, and, um, and, uh, and my, they divorced. And then, you know, so I kind of got raised up in that type of a scene. Uh, very free, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Maybe uh, there wasn't a lot of control there. I was kind of allowed to do whatever I wanted to do, which got me in a lot of trouble, you know. And uh, <laughs> I remember you just had I was, a lot of experiences. That's exactly it, it, they were, you know, and they really were. And um, but it ultimately led me to, you know, that duality. Um, ultimately, ultimately led me within. I mean, it it it, it turned me within. Eventually, there was nowhere else to go. That's right. And, you know, I came to the, for me, I came to this place and um, I had forgotten, totally forgotten as a child, how clearly I heard the voice within me. Uh, I mean, just so I can remember now I, I'd forgotten. Though. It's almost like I had numbed myself out to such a point where I couldn't remember, you know, th those things. And because I was really dwelling on past events and occurrences, and, you know, I was in this kind of shoulda, coulda. If I did this, this, if I'd have done this, this, if I'd have taken my scholarship, this, you know, all these things I could have done, which is uh, really, I think, probably the definition of, of a resentment is to refill the past constantly. And so the tape and the wheels are always turning. And um, to be honest with you, I couldn't read. Um, I mean, I could read, I could read, but I couldn't read a book because I couldn't focus. My, my mind was running, or the reel was constantly running. And um, <clears throat> I tell you, it's kind of sad because uh, when I went to war and I was in Iraq, um, is I read one of the first books, whole books I'd ever read in my life. You know, I made it through school and everything, never read a full book. And because um, I've always been real smart, I could just take things and put it together. I've always been able to do that. And, uh, but I read uh, Lord of the Rings while I was at war. And it was weird because the, the racing thoughts seemed to stop over there for some reason. Maybe, maybe because I had one purpose there, you know, one job, one purpose. There was nothing else to think about. And, um, and that was it. So I, re I read that book, which was 
was pretty, pretty amazing. But um, what happened to me is eventually I kind of got to the last house on the block. And I had, I had created all these different masks. Right. And for, I mean, you name it. I had a mask for everybody. And um, which is the definition of a personality, really, the persona. And exactly. Yep. And I know this very well, by the way. Yeah. If yeah. yeah. My testimony, you know that I know this very well. <laughs> and, you know, and, and so you don't know yourself because you're playing this part of, right. for everybody. You're an actor in a drama. Yep. And uh, what I now know is that, you know, I had been taught. And which means, which means I embraced it and thought myself that I was another. And I'd been taught by the world, by the media, by my educational, by the educational system, by the religious system, <laughs> by the government, by my family, all those things by every occurrence that had happened to me up to yeah. now, you yeah. know, which, which really kind of formed a belief system within me, which really was creating my reality because I was putting that sound off and it was forming up. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, but, but I got inside me, I, I always had this, this question and it was, it, it was always there. It was, it was multiple questions, but it was, what is the purpose of life? What is my purpose? It's gotta be more than this. Who, I mean, who am I really? And I, and I, I'd always had that. And I'd also always had this desire to know that the truth about everyone sure and because it but my dad did a real good job of instilling in me equality that and that you know there wasn't one above another you know the the this race thing is not really real everybody we're one family and everyone should be treated that way yeah and i and i can look back now my dad um, my biological dad he would plant seeds <laughs> He studied like I, I look. I look back on his bookshelf now. I can see it now, and he had like Buddhist, Buddhist books on Buddhism, on Hinduism, on I mean all of it. Sci he was a scientist, so and you know he had all of it, and he was looking into all of it. And I didn't know that then, and he, and he didn't tell me, but he would plant little seeds, you know. Of course, yeah. You know, and uh, and uh, which to me is very wise. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and he would never give me answers, although he, although he, he was a genius and, uh, and so he knew everything, but he would always point me to the place to go find the answers. And um, which I'm thankful for today. But I got to this place where everything had just become boring. It didn't matter. It, I mean, it didn't matter how many drugs I did. It didn't matter how much I partied and drank. It didn't matter how many girls I was with. It didn't matter how many clothes I had, the truck I had, the nice house, all that stuff. It had become so boring to me. And it, it wasn't enough. It had completely lost its taste. But I had no idea where to turn. And, and, and I had no idea where to go or who to ask. And, and I had so many masks that I had gotten to the point where I was scared to ask anybody anything because I was I was really scared they were going to see what I was really doing, right? In the shadows, you know. Right. And uh, and I ended up I ended up in my house. Uh, I had kicked the girl that was living with me out in a rage, and I, I would rage. Man, I had you know some people call it PTSD, whatever. But I mean, I would absolutely I'd be like this, or I would be ripping cabinet doors off the hinges yeah. and, and and I'd gotten to the point where I it scared me and I really didn't know I thought something was wrong with me and I, I remember even talking to my stepdad one day crying I was like man something's wrong with me I, you know I can't control <clears throat> me. and and I'm hurting people yeah you know and I get emotional talking about it but and Please feel free it's beautiful I love hearing testimonies my yeah. And, and, uh, you know, but you, you know, you're in that place and, and I still always remember like, there's got to be more to life. Than this. Right. There's got to be something else. This can't be it. Me waking up, going to making money, partying and, and same thing over and over and over again. And, the, the, you know, 
And at one time it was exciting, but it had totally lost its, its excitement. It almost seemed monotonous, the same thing over and over and over again. The hamster wheel. <clears throat> uh, and, and, you know, I got to this place though, and I'd kick um, just this beautiful woman out of my house, very nice woman, and I was just not in a place to be with anybody. And, and I had totally kicked her out of my house. And um, I remember I, I went, I went for four days and looking back on it, I, I, I was probably trying to kill myself, but it just in, in, you know, in that way. And I wound up in my house, locked in my house on a Monday. I owned my own business back then. And I called my partner and um, I never called in sick. I would go in, you know, completely hung over and everything else. And, you know, I'd work. And I called him and I said, man, I, you know, I, I can't come in. I'm, I'm sick. And, uh, and I was sick. And, and uh, I was so scared. After that phone call, I couldn't call anybody. I was so scared that somebody was going to see me. Oh, wow. Uh, yep. And I couldn't. I had every bond in my house drawn. I couldn't even look outside. I couldn't even look out of my peephole. I couldn't even like open the door. I was so scared that somebody was going to be there and they were going to see me like that. And, you know, and, and when you kind of carry like this personality of this really rough and tough guy, you know, and I was, and you don't want anybody to see you broken like that. It's scary. And, and I know a lot of people, you know, go through that. And I know, and I know that I usually don't share this testimony. It's been a long time, but so I locked myself in there and I said, you know what? And, and, and the thing about it is I'll, I'll back up. I had gotten asked God tattooed on my traps in reverse, in reverse. So I'd have to read it every morning, two years prior to that. Wow. Something about asking God. Wow. About a year prior to this encounter I'm telling you about, I met a man and he asked this group I was with if we heard God's voice. Mm. And, 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 he, and he said, well, he's, and I asked him later how he was hearing God's voice. And then he basically showed me how to journal in, in about five seconds. And I got very offended because he brought the Bible up. And... <laughs> Because I thought I thought everybody that read the Bible were hypocrites, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And, uh, well, a really bunch did. of actors, right? Because that's the yeah. name of what a, an actor is. If you look at the definition, yeah. it's a hypocrite. So a bunch yeah. of actors carrying around the same book. Not knowing I was a hypocrite too. Right. Was like, you know? Just mirrors. <laughs> Just mirrors. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But he was a very wise man because I I got real angry when he brought the Bible up and um. I said, man, that's interesting, but I'm not interested. <laughs> and, uh, and I was mad. I said, I don't, I said, I don't have, I don't, I don't even desire to read that book. I said, I've tried to read it one time. I couldn't understand a lick of it. And I don't have the time, man. I just don't have the time. And he said, well, can you just do, can you just say three simple prayers? And he didn't know I was really seeking and searching on the inside. I, I really wanted something. And he said, can you just ask God to give you the desire and ask God to give you the understanding and ask God to give you the time? He said, can you oh, just, wake, wow. up? Can you just oh, wake up five minutes early and ask those three things? And I did. This was about a year prior to me ended up in my house. And about a week after that prayer, I tore my shoulder up. I was a big weightlifter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I played rugby and, and I tore my shoulder up. Lift well, there's your time. Was, yeah. <laughs> and I had to get surgery and I was laid up. And, and the, the girl that was living with me had bought me a Bible. This is one my dad got me later. And I, left, I used to leave it on the table and I would dust it off when she would have her friends over because they did Bible studies in my house and she was living with me. And I, wow. so I wanted them to think I was reading it. Wow. And, and so after meeting this man 
And asking those three things about a week later, I tear my shoulder up. I have to have surgery. I'm laid up for a month and out of nowhere, I start reading this book and I start hearing this voice again. And about a year into that, because I couldn't stop doing all the things I was doing, it was tearing me up. I mean, it was tearing me up. And uh, I ended up in my house where we're at now and locked in there. And um, I said, you know what? I'm done. And when I crawled in my bed and I, I, I was looking up at the ceiling and I said, you know what? I know you're real. And I know there's more meaning to life. But if I'm going to continue living like this, I'm killing myself right now. And something happened. Something. It's unexplainable. I try to explain it. But something happened. There was there was a just a <clears throat> divine intervention in my room by myself. Yeah. And yeah. I have more clarity than I've ever had, probably since I was a child. And I could see, I could see the path I was on. I could see that I had chosen it. And I could see. I could see this thing that I used to say, you know, God, let me feel death, what it feels like. And, and I did, I could feel it. I mean, it was, and I could see that what I was doing to myself was, was ultimately killing me. And, and at the very same moment, the very thing I just said, I, it's like, I just, I just took it away. I said, no, I don't want that. Wow. In my heart. I just, I cringed and turned. I mean, I literally cringed and turned. And, and at what, when I cringed and turned, I heard a voice speak to me. And I used to think it was outside of me. And at first, at the very, when I very first heard it, I, it was from the right side. And it sounded like it was so much me. It felt all the pain and everything I was going through. And it said, just ask me for help. <laughs> ask. And and I and I freaked out. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, went, I went from a man about to kill himself. To, <laughs> I rolled out of bed, and the voice continued. And it was whirling around me. It was in me. It was everywhere. And like it a tornado. It would not stop. And yeah. I rolled out of bed. And I was like, Oh my God! I got. I just. I got to clean the house. I got to. I went to try to clean the house. Yeah, and I just got to do something. I got to do something. <laughs> Is the ego's and, freaking out? What's going and, on? <laughs> and uh, you know, and I did, and I, and I made it. I made it from you know my room to my kitchen, which was not a very. It was a three bedroom uh, garden home, and by the time I made it to my kitchen. Uh, there was a tangible physical force that pressed me down by my shoulders. I could feel it almost like two hands were on my shoulders and pressed me to my floor. And I was stuck. It's, these things are just, uh, I, I can't, I, I, you know, I wish I could explain exactly, but that's what happened. And, and I was stuck on my floor. I couldn't get up and I broke. I mean, I completely broke wide open. And, you know, I don't know how long I was laying there. <laughs> I know when I got up, there was a puddle of tears. And the only the only prayer I knew well, was, of course, the prayer the guy told me to ask. Prior to that, the only prayer I knew was the prayer my mom used to pray with me every night when I'd go to sleep. And it was, now I lay me down to sleep and pray the Lord my soul, that one. And I, you know, I prayed that all the way through the army. I forgot. I quit praying that. And then when I went to war, I started praying it again. And that was the only prayer I really knew. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then and then I knew the prayer that they had taught me in AA because I was trying so hard to stop drugging and drinking. And and they had they had said, uh, do for me what I can't do for myself. 
Um, and I, I, I said that over and over and over again while I was laying on that kitchen floor. That's all I knew to do. And, and when I got up, something had happened. I still felt like crap. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, I still had many things I knew I had to face. But there was just this new, almost like this energy that was there to, that allowed me to do the things I needed to do and that I had to do this power in, and, and, and I, and, and, and from there, I just, you know, I got told things like, you know, um, I got told to switch phones and completely get rid of everybody that, that was in there. I got told to, to turn my TV off, get rid of my cable. I got told uh, to st completely stayed off of, you know, whatever was going on back then. I don't know if it was Facebook or MySpace or whatever. And I mean, I would stay in my house and just devour the Bible full days. I mean, 24 hours and, and, you know, and, 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 and everything started kind of falling away The you know, I no longer had a desire to, to party. I no longer had a desire to do any of those things anymore. And I remember, and I was still cussing and smoking cigarettes and stuff and, you know, and, and, but I remember one day I was outside of an AA meeting and I was, and I was dropping F bombs and all of a sudden I was like, you know, I just don't think I want to, I just don't think I want to say that anymore. <laughs> Although I still say it sometimes, <laughs> but you know, but these types of things were happening, you know, and one day I was smoking a cigarette and I was like, it, it had lost its flavor to me. And I was like, why am I doing this? I, I just don't think I want this anymore, you know? And, uh, and, from dreams and visions, which I still have all the time, just incredible dreams and visions. At first, in every dream, I had this friend with me, and this friend was teaching me all kind of things like how to heal the sick, how I was going to receive signs, and, and, and all those types of things. Um, and I can never remember my friend's face. And, and then I remember one day reading, you know, in the Bible, something about the Holy Spirit. Somebody said, the Holy Spirit's your faceless friend. I said, okay, well, that's got to be the Holy Spirit. And then I learned, well, that's me. <laughs> exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. I've been coming to myself, teaching myself in dreams, you know, yes. and uh, it, in visions and things like that. And uh, really cool um, stuff started happening. People started getting healed all around me, which freaked the church people out because that's the thing I did. I went to church because I didn't know where else to go, you know. And, uh, you're attracted to the light that's out there right it's yeah. like well i know that that's supposed to have light i'm gonna go over there yep yep and i got you know and i and i did um i did get some things that were kind of planted in me that 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 i had to deal with that were probably probably very religious and, I, and basically what i learned is i was just parroting information that somebody else had told me exactly and, and, and now what i really try to do is really speak from experience and encounter and and the things that I've heard, and uh, I can't say I do it all the time, but I tr I try. That's what that's where I try to come from, and um and and so I, I really like to speak about the things that 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 I hear, and and the things I post are things I hear in the mornings, and, and I write, and, and you know what I hear, and, and I like to teach from that place too. But I've really come to this place where um because I've seen it in my own life. And you know that thing about repetition? I mean, I've been hitting this rock for I think eight years now. And but but I've seen there's been so many people that rejected it when I first got going. And I have seen count just so many have come into this thing now. They may not remember they were reading my messages and listening, because they got their own message now that they're that, that they're speaking about, but it's it's one sound. It There's is. many different variations of that one sound. That's right. But it's one sound going out. And through repetition, you know, what happens in the brain, you know, we, it, it, through repetition and discipline, these neural pathways become fixed, you know, and it becomes almost like a pattern or a habit, but, you know, and uh, whatever you want to call it, but it's neuroplasticity. We're expanding. I think Jesus said that when he said repent, which actually means go beyond your current understanding go beyond the understanding into the encounter, which actually means turn within, I think, in there, made, right? And so you can believe that, you know, it's all here right now. It's you know you. that 
the turning um, aspect, I love this because uh, when you take a look at it, the word is, uh, we know it in Hebrew as teshuvah. And when you look at the, the root of it, it's from the word that, ugh, this is so beautiful. This is, it's from the word that is called, it's yeshav. And yeshav means to settle. So not only does it mean to turn, it means to settle. And it also means to marry. Hmm. Now, when you look at the letters, it's yod sheen with a bet. Yod sheen means to be and exist as a being of substance. Bet means house, temple, inside. So mm. when you turn, when you get settled, when you marry yourself within, because it's all about the inward journey. Mm -hmm. So you've married that masculine and feminine within you and they become married within, you have fully turned yourself. And now you are in a place where you have settled. You have actually mm. made the full teshuvah because mother presents it to you. She's, the tav is on the prefix. So the tav is like mother's covenant. She's just, She's trying to teach you your external orientation, you know, be aware, be awake, see what's going on, understand duality so you can understand it. Mm -hmm. And then she takes you through this process of turning, but the word teshuva has a vav in the middle, which means turn, settle, marry, connect to your heart. Mm -hmm. And then it has a hey on the suffix side, which has to do with father. So again, this is parenting. This is spiritual parenting because we have parents over us that are known as yod he vav he okay? yod he vav he with the sheen in the middle, which is fire, which is Yeshua, okay? Mm -hmm. So you've got yod he vav he are teaching you. So when you've gone through the process of Mother's Covenant, she gives you her fingerprint and said, you've completed the journey that I'm telling you, son. You've done what you need to with your external orientation. You don't need the cigarettes anymore. You dumped your friends, you reoriented, you got off the booze, you got off the drugs. Good job. Here's my fingerprint. You've completed that. Now let the fire burn your heart so mm. you can connect to it and build yourself on the inside because what's going to happen is the father will be revealed to you. The father will be revealed to you in your very own shadow because that's where your glory dwells. Mm. I love that. Isn't that amazing? It is and so it's it's like it tells us that one word is telling us the process of what you've been going through, because when you get into that hay that hidden aspect, which is what you would call the dark energy, which doesn't mean people get over good and evil. It means it's the hidden aspect of the divine feminine that the father brings forward to bring balance to you it's like you really want to know me, this is how you get to know yourself. But you have to go and venture into that place that's unknown. You need to venture into the place of where your pain and your suffering is. Because once you bring mother's light into that dark energy and you marry it, you will be revealed in your glory. Mm. You know, As fully turned. It, yesterday when you were um, teaching, you had brought up some of this, what you're talking about right now, actually, the... the the parenting, I was like that, and um, and and all of a sudden it, it dawned on me that um, you know um, you know where it says it says be still and know I I am God, and I, I mean to me for me um, that's been it, I mean in everything, and, and that's what I actually teach. I feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over again. <laughs> And, and well, hey, I, I, it's called inculcation. That's yeah. the way the Hebrews teach and, and through the Hebrew and Aramaic is repeating it over and over and over and yeah. over again for neuroplasticity. Let's create some new highways up here. <laughs> yep. Yep. Making the crooked path straight, huh? Yes. And, uh, yeah. And uh and I learned, you know, that that uh be still um and this and I teach this as a, a meditation. So um, the way and awareness is very important. Yes. Being aware, yes. knowing yes. how you feel, knowing what you're feeling, sensing things. You know, there's so many times I can't tell you how many times I've walked out to my truck and not even noticed <laughs> the birds chirping. They're chirping. So so do they just start chirping when I start hearing them, or were they already chirping? They're already chirping. <laughs> I just wasn't aware. I was in a program, just you know. And or feeling the grass beneath my feet, and all these things to me, um, 
they're important for multiple reasons. For instance, we're omnipresent because we're one. Well, like let's take spirit travel because some people call it spirit travel. Well, let's say I'm sitting here, but I want to, I want to experience this tree out in my yard. Well, I just become aware of the tree. I'm already there. So I do a practice where like I'll, I'll be sitting on my couch and I'll move into here and I'll feel myself sitting here. I'll feel the table. I'll feel the tile beneath my feet and I'll go back to the couch and I'll fully feel the couch. So it's very important to me because it, it helps with being present to be aware of everything I'm doing and, 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 and everything I'm feeling and seeing. And, and I'm getting better and better at it the more I practice and, and, or maybe it's just happening anyway, who knows? But for instance, um, if I can feel like sometimes I may feel just out of whack, uneasy, dis-ease, the absence of ease. So what I teach is the very same thing it says, be still and know I'm God, pause, to pause, and I learned some of this in AA, pause, free yourself of, of all external disturbances, um, relax, which you, we can do through meditation, slow your breathing, relax mm -hmm. your head and everything and your body follows, relax, and as you slow your breathing, you become aware of the energy that's in the breath. And as you slow your breathing, you're kind of tricking the mind and the body because the mind and the body thinks it's safe and calm. Exactly. And, and as you relax, you melt yourself into wherever you're at and you drop down within. And you experience. Exactly. You and what I believe is exactly. these are all opportunities for me to get to know myself. Exactly. And yep. And so every time something comes up like that, it's another opportunity. If I'm aware, now I can choose to stay in that program and be ran around uneasy for as long as I want <laughs> until I become aware. Of it, you know? Yep. Or I can realize that you know there's nothing worth losing my peace. There's nothing. Exactly. None of this. Not the money. Not the customers. Not the it, nothing. And so if I feel, it, you know, it says, let the peace of God rule your heart. Well, this, these little seeds have been planted in me. There was Brother Arthur Burke um, years ago, used to come over from Wales to this little place in Fort Deposit because God told him to come. And he brought the revelation of let, letting the peace of God rule your heart, you know, follow the peace. And, and which, I, you know, I've always kept with me. So if I feel this ease, the absence of ease, if, I, if I'm aware of that, then I just bring myself right back into ease. I believe the Yoga Sutra 1.3 says that the seer is established in its natural environment. And in the Gospel of Thomas, they, they asked Jesus how they would know we are of the Father. And he said, movement and repose. Well, repose is a meditative state of peace and tranquility. It's our, it's our natural environment. It's our natural state of being. Exactly. If we move, if we move out of our now, if we move right now out of our now out of here and we move to the future or we move to the past, we just disrupted Shalom. Yep. There is none because only the only thing that exists and that is true is the now. Yes. And, and so the, that is such a huge key for people that have anxiety. It's yes. like stop tripping up over the past stop yep. tripping up over the future as well because it isn't here yep. and we we get ourselves out of that place of shalom yep. i wanted to share something with you though before we get too far on because to know is such a beautiful beautiful word it's the word yada i have to put a cough drop in because i'm i'm still not completely over my whatever happened whatever i experienced and so i keep getting coughing fits so if my mouth looks funny and i'm swall it's because i got a cough drop in there you're getting better. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm getting a lot better, though. I'm very grateful. I haven't been sick in a decade. So it's it's making me be very grateful for when my body is not diseased. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, oh, it's all good. It's all good. 
So yada is the Hebrew word that means to know. And it is the word in that verse that says, be still and know. And the reason why I see this as being so beautiful is that, you know, there's a lot of people that freak out when you talk about the Kabbalah tree of life. You know, there's a lot of people go, oh, don't do that Hebrew mysticism stuff. Don't go, don't go there. Don't do a go occult. And it's like, it's just hidden knowledge that's waiting to be discovered by you. Why, why do we make such a big deal about it? Because the, the controllers don't want us to know these things. Because when you have divine experiential knowledge, you are changed. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what you're talking about. Because yada is a word that means to know, mm -hmm. intimately knowing. Mm -hmm. And in the tree of life, it's, a, it's the sephiroth that is hidden. So when you look at the tree of life, there's a little area that they'll put a dot, 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 dot all the way around. And they'll put it in its da'at. Da'at is the action form of the word yada to know. So what's so amazing about this, and I'm just sharing this as a nugget for you and for me because I love the language and so that you can have a deeper appreciation of what, what you just explained, of what that language, what that, that word is meaning and what is it saying to us. It is spelled yo dalit ein. Yo dalit is the word for hand. It means power. It means um, action. It means deed. It means uh, the power means and direction to do something by the strength of your own hand that is being given to you. That's what Yad is. Then the I means to see, to know the purpose, the fountain within, mm. the power that is within the flesh. So to Yada means something that you have found through experiential knowledge because it means to know intimately through the work and deed of your own hand because something was given to you a power a vision was given into you and you went through the door of your inward man so that you could see and know the purpose of why you're having this divine experiential knowledge when it hits the tree of life in its final form it becomes instead of yada it becomes da'at da'at is experiential nada knowledge but now it has Yod Tav on the end. So the Dalit is still there. The Dalit is saying, go within, find where you are weak and feeble, find the place that you're disconnected and connect to it, connect to the covenant. Ein Tav means time. Go through the door to your heart while you are in time so that you will see and know the purpose of the covenant, which is meant to have experience, experiential knowledge of yourself. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and it's right yeah. here. Yeah. It's right yeah. here. Yeah. So I wanted to share that with you because you just described Da'at, the hidden place on the Sephirot that there are some people that don't want to go there and your whole testimony of getting to that place where you had, you know, that you didn't want to talk much about and haven't shared much where you shut the door and you didn't want anybody to see you. This is so amazing. What you did is you gave a cry for help. I recently shared something that the spirit revealed to me about the name of Yeshua. In the New Testament, it's Yod Shin Vav Ein. That's the Aramaic form for it. And it means a cry for help, it means salvation, it means a rock, and it means rays of light. Many times when the word Yeshua was written, they made it capitalized and made it about a man, instead of what the vibratory nature of what was being said. So mm. in that moment, you were crying out, right? So we made it about a man, Yeshua, when it's really our own, we mm -hmm. are making this cry. And so Yeshua, Yodshin, remember I said Yodshin means a being of substance. Vavine, one who is connected to their heart that is seeking to know the purpose. And that's why you cry out. You are saying, I need the power of the fire to ignite my heart so I can connect to it, so I can know why I'm here, so that mm -hmm. I can stand upon the rock, so I can bring forth rays of light. And I can answer the call when other people are crying out for help because I've done it. I went to Da'at. I went to that secret place within and I found the answers. And usually we will see Yeshua Mashika. We'll see Yeshua the Christ. Mm. Mashika means anointing. Yeah. And it ends <laughs> in an olive. It, it, it means a measure of oil. 
It means to be anointed, and then it has an olive added to it, which is the divine feminine. The divine feminine is the embodiment of love. So when you got in your low place where you shut the door and you didn't want anybody to see you, you cried out for help. You cried out to help because you knew that you needed to have a rock to stand on. You didn't have one. You didn't want anybody to see you because you wanted to be a being of substance. You saw all the masks. You didn't want anybody to know that you were a hypocrite, that which you couldn't stand other people being because that was a mirror. So you cried out. Mm. And in the process of you crying out, you found your foundation because you connected right here. And then the anointing, the measurement of the oil was presented to you as Mashika because now you have become one. You found the principle of oneness unity because you went in here. You answered your own call because you went on the inside where all the truth is. The truth is love. There's only one love. Everything is love. There is not anything outside of love. Love is true. Everything else is an illusion or a distortion of the one truth. Yeah. So I wanted to bring that to you because that that is like, that is the tree of life. We learn through the tree of good and evil, right? We learn in the system of duality and all of a sudden we see that it doesn't work anymore. So you have to go inside and that's what you did. So I just wanted to bring those words to you to say, you just summed up that whole journey. You just summed up the vibrational uh, vibrational frequency of Yeshua, or Yeshua Mashika by your own journey in meeting and the revealing of your own self through your heart. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's I, I love testimonies. They're amazing. I got to show you something. Please. Uh, what you were just speaking of, and I've got, uh, I've had a lot of things revealed to me exactly what you were saying. That's what I was telling Del Dale in, in the chat. I was like, man, all this stuff that you're talking about in Aramaic, man, I've seen it through looking through the Greek and the Hebrew, just using a strong concordance and, and seeing everything through oneness and love. And so like I was told, if you see, like I was told to go and rewrite the scriptures I was finding that that, that and I love what you've been doing on Facebook by the way everybody needs to go see your and and go to your Facebook page because I love how you're rewriting them they are awesome <laughs> well I was told to do it and so I just do it and like uh, I love it and then I was also told like uh all these symbols and stuff that have been distorted and and uh it, I was I was told take them back and, and yes about their true meaning so uh, you know I started like I used to do this a lot because you know, people try to make it out like it was some kind of bad thing. And uh, and I would say, well, this, you know, this represents the single eye. And it represents three sixes, which is the perfect man, mankind. Six, six, Perfection. six equals a nine. Six plus times three is 18. One plus eight is nine. And it means completed. Yeah. Like, the, and I, I know a guy calls it the ninth mind or the mind of God, the divine mind. And all. yeah, it's complete. And so... One of the first things that happened to me, um, one of the first things that happened to me, um, Jesus, I, I remember going into this dream and, and Jesus spoke to me and said, I want you to pray for the spirit of Jeremiah and in the dream. And of course, in the dream, I'm praying it. And, and what was weird about it is I woke up out of a complete sleep and I was praying it out loud uncontrollably. And, uh, and then I got up and I got on my knees and I was like, cause I had been told, you know, you don't need to be praying for another spirit or anything like that. And, and I, and so I, you know, I got out of the bed and I said, you know, this is just how I said it. I said, you know, I didn't think I was supposed to be praying for no spirit, but I believe this is you. So I'm going to pray to you exactly like what you want. In the middle of the night, I got on the floor and prayed it. And then, uh, and then I later found out for years people told me i was a prophet and i was like and then then somebody told me prophets their the lives they lived and i was like i don't want to be a prophet you know? and, <laughs> they're uh, usually not very popular <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and i've been through a lot of that now and, uh, yeah and but and, and so like two years went by and nothing really happened except all i knew is i couldn't shut up about the things i was hearing I mean, people would be like, man, be careful who you talk to about all that. And I'm like, well, I can't help it. It comes out like a machine gun. It just, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and I'd get asked to speak places. And, and you're looking at a man that couldn't speak. I couldn't speak in front of people at all. Words wouldn't come out. I, I'd get so much anxiety. 
And 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 the first one of the first times I spoke was at my dad's funeral, and I was so terrified. My grandfather did the the funeral. He, he's an Episcopal priest, retired now, but and he asked me to sit up front. And I was thinking, God, now you got me sitting up front, and and there were it was packed. I don't know how many hundreds of people, in there. and and all I could say was hands were sweaty. I was I was trembling. And I, and I knew I had this scripture that I had, I had shared with my dad the night before he passed. And, and he said the most beautiful thing. He said, I know, I know that one. And he said, I look, I look forward to that. And it's the one that says there's many mansions in my house. I now see all that within now. But back then I was like, you know, there's, which is true too. And, and so I got up and, and I, all I could say was I can do all things. I'd say it over and over and over and over and over and over. And by the time I got up there, I blacked out. I don't know what in the world I said. And and when it was over, everybody in there got shook. Completely shook. When it, when it was over, there were people hugging each other's necks. This movement of love, this love, it hit people. And it just took over. It wasn't a funeral anymore. It was a, more like a reunion of love. And, and I remember people, my parents, they were like, what in the world? We've never heard you speak like that. What in the world? You, you, you've never done that. And I was like, I don't know what happened. And I had this burning in my belly. It still happens to me. And it, and it, and it burned for hours after I was done. It felt, it felt like something was sour in my belly. And I remember asking, I was like, what in the world is that? Because it happens every time I speak. And I heard one day, you, you've you eaten the scroll and it's, and it's. Sweet sour. in your mouth and it yeah. turns bitter in your stomach. Yeah. You have to, it has to come out, you know? And, um, and then, and then uh, all kind of crazy stuff happened, but I had this dream. I wanted to talk about this because you, you talked about the anointing and I, and I, my friends, I had these friends and I used to go down to this, they called them Holy Ghost. Uh, gatherings and they would just happen out in the middle of nowhere down in Fort Deposit which is a rural country little town and we'd show up at this lady's house beautiful lady named Mama Faye I love her um, she helped she helped me understand that Christ was in me um, and anyway we'd have these get togethers and, and <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be everybody would share and the, it would move and it would it was organic and people would show up from all over they would just show up out of nowhere and um and anyway, uh, I knew my friends had been anointed. And back then I was thinking, you know, I, well, I need my anointing, you know. And, um, and I remember I was reading this book called I Believe in Dreams and Visions by Kenneth E. Hayden. And now I can read. You know, I went from a man that couldn't read to like I couldn't read enough. And, and, uh, and I, in this book, he'd been visited by Jesus um, through dreams, and he sometimes he said Jesus would just walk into the room, sit down with him, and talk to him. And I was like, man. And I had like a child. I've always had this: if it happens for you, I know it happens. It'll happen for me. You know. I love that. And and so I was like, I read that, and I was like, you know what? If you came and visited that man, I believe you'll come and visit me. And I and I said a little prayer. I said maybe you'll just come in one of my dreams or something. Well, about three nights into that prayer, sure enough, I fall asleep and I'm in this sanctuary of this old, old, look like an old church, old wooden, just sanctuary. And I'm standing at the front and my two friends are there. And I knew that they had already received their anointing and I knew Jesus was coming to anoint me. And, and, and then I run to the back and I'm looking out of the door, out of this window, and I know Jesus is coming, but I can't see him. And all of a sudden, I'm back at the front of the of the sanctuary, and I'm looking at the door, and I'm waiting on Jesus to walk through the door, and he comes through the ceiling of the sanctuary. <laughs> right there. And, and he, he was a pure white light. So not so bright, I couldn't look at it, so pure that I could not even look at it. It was, it was un, almost unrecognizable to me. It was, a, it was a white I'd never seen before. And, and I fell flat on my face, like, like I got glued to the floor again. And I'm, and I'm sitting there like this, 
and all of a sudden his feet are right at my head and he begins to dump warm oil all over me to the point, and there was power in it. My body started to shake and vibrate and the frequency and energy just, and to the point where I was swimming in it, it was so much oil. And I came off the ground and I went back out through the roof, just like he did. And, and, I, and at this point, you know, and my dreams are very lucid, so I'm thinking about what's going on. And I'm like, you know, and I'm up in the clouds and I'm looking down, and I'm like this, and I'm like, you know, I'm feeling like, yeah, this is me, you know. And uh, and I'm and I'm looking down, and now I can see Jesus on the ground, he's looking at me, and he said something so simple to me. And every time he speaks to me in these dreams, his mouth never moves. Right. That's, right. Who, that's who told me that the way we're communicating now is actually kind of like a lower form of communication. Exactly. We're going to communicate without even having to move our mouths. We just exactly telepathy mm -hmm. yeah and uh that's who told me that was him in a dream so i just tell everybody and uh anyway he spoke to me and he said uh come down from there <laughs> and i was like and i woke up and i was like what come down from there what i mean and for years you know i thought about that but years down the road me and Brian Christian connected. I'm not sure if you know Brian Christian, but I do. I haven't met him. I, I, he was oh. on a, a live stream when I was talking to Kendra um, before, but I've never met him personally. Amazing man. Amazing. And his wife, Sean, they're amazing people. I love them. Anyway, we connected. And uh, when we connected, Brian was still believing in like hell and the devil and all those types of things. And I wasn't, but I was, I was cool with it, whatever, you know? And, uh, this woman was at the meeting and Brian had all this cool stuff happening, like gold dust would just cover everybody. And lights would shoot across the rooms and lights would flicker and stuff and, you know, really cool stuff, which I still see. But um, I remember we were in this church of God having a meeting with them, and which is pretty cool. And, and these gold slabs showed up all over the back pew. I was picking them up and giving them to the little kids. There was a woman there. Um, gosh, her, her name doesn't come to mind right now. I know her too, but maybe it will. We met and she later left and she said, I had a vision of you and I'm going to paint it and send it to you. She knew nothing about the story I just told you. This is years later. This is probably six, seven years later, six years later. And that's the vision. <gasps> Wow. That's me. Wow. And that's my two boys. Oh my gosh. Wow. Blew me away. These things. You know? And they're reminders. Because no matter what, sometimes I forget who I am. You know, sometimes it, it's almost like a burden and it gets tough sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes it feels tough. Your life yeah, yeah. too. Um, and you know, and, you, and I have to remind myself, you know, that most of the time when we're speaking about these things that a lot of people may not understand yet, um, and we're speaking about things sometimes because we spend a lot of time in the deep within, and we hear things that maybe no ear has heard yet, and mm -hmm. and see things that maybe no eye has seen yet and we begin to try to explain and talk about these experiences and these encounters and a lot of a lot more people are learning to stay in the posture of being open and learning and i'm i'm here to learn i am too i don't i don't know it all I, i'm here to learn and everything is teaching me everything these mirrors are teaching me everything is a teacher and and if i can stay in that posture of okay I, i'm learning from everything is teaching me and learning and I'm growing and I'm maturing, yes. you know, and, and what happens though is when we start to speak about these types of things, because certain people have a certain belief system and it, and like I said, it's every occurrence that's happened up to there. It's everything they've been taught. It's, it's, it's a construct. It is a belief system mm -hmm. that, and, and which is their life because it is their reality. And what happens when we start to speak about things that are outside of that construct, it challenges that belief system. And when you challenge a belief system, the person feels that their life is being threatened. 
because it is their life. Yeah, because that's what the ego, their ego has built as their construct that they function within. And anything outside of that produces fear. And that is the one thing that the ego avoids at all costs, is anything that it does not know. Yep. And so if you feel your life's being threatened, um, you feel like you're being attacked. And so you attack because you feel like you can be attacked. Because, uh, because in all honesty, we still feel we're vulnerable when we're not, we're invulnerable. Exactly. And, and, and so when that attack comes, what you think is you're being threatened. And so you attack back, you, you know, because you, you think you're protecting your life, but you have to lose your life, that life. Exactly, exactly. And those who Those who lose their life will find it. And those who seek to save their life will lose it. There you go. And, and so we're here, and, and so I go, you know, if you've been offended or poked or prodded, good. You need to be, because we all need to expand. We all need to go beyond. Yep. yep. And, and some of us are here to do that very thing. Yes. And, you know, I was told years ago, I was like, uh, I heard uh, Alec, you know, you're being used to provoke thought. You're provoking people to think again. They have, my, and I heard my people have stopped thinking, questioning, thinking. And, and, and so and then I started learning about the questions. And so I teach, I, I really try to teach that prior to, to any time I speak places. And I try to allow people to understand what might happen so that they can understand that if I can stay open and not, not turn it off, just say, you know, I may not understand this, this may be offending me a little bit now, and I may be getting poked, but lying behind that offense, there's a question coming from your higher self. Bingo. If Do you, you know that you just described, you just described the letter Lamed? Huh. <laughs> the Lamed, the Lamed, and if you've heard any things I've been saying about, I speak about the Lamed all the time. It is the staff of authority, and it means to teach and to learn one who uh, goads, urges, pricks, and stings with the rod of authority. Oh, wow. And so wow. you'll see that a lot whenever the Lamed is added. It is, it is someone who is doing exactly what you are. You're poking and prodding and urging some people to move and to expand. And sometimes they get, get pricked and they get stung. But, you know, when we get into that place of offense, that's when we know that we just caught our ego that our ego wants to keep us pinned in and then when we realize everything that you've been talking about on all your facebook posts that we are one that the ego is just an experience it's just a fractal that is seeing it through a set of lenses in an avatar that's name is carrie or alec or brandon or you know name countless of our friends we're all the same we're just a fractal of that sameness in oneness. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, so you you totally described that Lamed. And in the New Testament, when it talks about New Jerusalem coming down, it's not a physical structure. It's entities, it's beings. And it's written as Le Orshalem. Um, before it was written as Yarushlayim. But in the Aramaic, it's Le Orshalem. Has the Lamed added to it. Then it has the word or, which is light, and then it has the word shalom, which means completed, safe in mind, body, and state. Mm. So these who are coming, and so I'm laughing, I was listening to your vision where, so Yeshua says, you need to come down, right? Yeah. Well, in order to come down, you must ascend. Mm -hmm. You must go up. Yeah. And so we have a very arduous climb up this mountain to have our mountaintop experience like Moshe, like Yeshua, when they were both transfigured, but yet they had to come down because they needed to bring the revelation as Laorshalem of those who have found the light. Because what you're describing is what's called Oretta, and Oretta is the celestial law, the one law that we are all one. Mm. And Oretta supersedes Namusa, which is man's laws. And so in order to have Oretta, to be able to be speaking through power like you do, you have to experience Miltha, which is the word. And Miltha 
is that which fills you up and expands you, connecting you to the covenant of one. And you speak about it because your heart's been open, your throat chakra has been open, and so you speak with authority. So every time you rewrite scriptures, every time you share, every time you're invited to speak and you begin to speak these things that challenge and goad and urge and prick people on, you are doing exactly what those who make up Laor Shalom are to do in this day and age. And it may not be popular, but someone needs to be speaking these truths. And I'm so grateful for it. There's a word in Aramaic called it's mish. I don't know how to sp pronounce it. I don't speak the languages. This is a funny thing. I don't speak the languages and I can barely read them, but I study them and I know them. You're doing pretty good. <laughs> Go figure that out. So there's an Aramaic word that means it's, I think it's Meshachach and it sounds like Mashiach or Messiah, but it's the word anointing and an oil, oil anointing. So where we get Mashika from the Christ. Okay. But in the middle, it has a cough. And it's been added in the middle of the word. So every time a letter is added to the middle of the word, it's speaking to your heart. And it means to be able. Mm. What this is saying is that the cough means to grasp. It means power. It means to tame and yoke. It's a cup that is wanting to be filled. Mm. So when it's added to the center of the word, it means that we are all able to receive the anointing oil if we grasp a hold of the power that is within our heart that is just waiting for the oil to fill it up oh wow yeah so you're talking about us so your dream all these like i said these words show up and i'm like i gotta share this because i wanted you to know that you're describing these words through experience through divine experiential knowledge do you need to know the language no does anybody need to le le learn the language no if it's calling to you please pick it up and study it because there's a reason but it should be con confirming everything innately that we're already experiencing in here through da'at Everything that you've explained, your whole entire testimony and why you speak the way you do. And there's one thing, one more thing I want to add. And then if there's something else you want to close out with, I, I'm, I'm leaving room for that. But you were talking about the bitter and the sweet when you would speak. Bitter and sweet is the frankincense and myrrh. Literally. So think about the gifts that were brought. Mm -hmm. Gold, frankincense frankincense and myrrh gold is a conductor it's a conductor of energy it's the highest mm -hmm. conductor frankincense and myrrh myrrh is a word that means bitter frankincense i'm telling you the definitions in hebrew myrrh means bitter frankincense means sweet mm. so you just described the point of what you went through in your anointing that which you went through which is bitter mar to the sweet laban you went through the bitter journey of the chaotic waters that you learned to raise your head that's mar in order for the sweet to come forth laban as a teacher that has a staff of authority that goes and urges people on that has built themselves on the inside while in the flesh who is a son that builds and takes the bitter to the sweet. That is the exact process that Esther went through before she was able to approach the king. She went through six months of myrrh treatment and six months of frankincense. And then she was brought before the king and she was coronated and crowned as queen. What people don't understand is that is the divine sacred marriage of the masculine and the feminine within it's an allegory it's talking about us in our process of the bitter and sweet so you were speaking as your higher self as one who's already gone through the bitter and the sweet you were taking your bitter life experiences and turning them into sweet water that was coming to through your mouth in order to bring forth light oretta the celestial law of one love, a covenant that is meant to be revealed to a people so that we can understand that we are going above and beyond that which has been given to us as a foundation into something that's bringing us into eternal life through Oretta so that we become Miltha, the word made flesh and manifest as Le Orshalem through Da'at.
experiential knowledge while in the circle of time. Mm. That's powerful. I just I just summed up in the in the words everything that you've just been speaking not, for the last hour. Yeah. I just gave it to you in Hebrew. That's yeah. exactly what you've done. And it is so beautiful because I see it and these words wanted to come and say, here, you just explained us. Thank you for allowing our energy to join with you because we are becoming the Miltha. We are becoming the word made flesh. It wasn't just for a man. They made a religion about a man instead of about his teachings. And he was mm -hmm. teaching us the way. The way to the way is the word oreka, by the way. And the first three letters of that is light. It means light, the way mm -hmm. of light, the way of one, the way of oreta that was before the beginning that created Chaya, that created life. So your message using the English vernacular, using the English scriptures that you rewrite as the spirit tells you is continuing to bring life and love to people. And that I am so grateful. I'm grateful for your, your journey, your testimony. I thank you for your tears. I thank you for your love. I thank you for just being you and coming here today and sharing yourself with me and with everybody else that's gonna listen to this conversation. I thank you for just being you and lifting up the entire humanity into a higher level of our state of being and that you speak it loud and clear. And guess what? I see you and it's beautiful. Mm, thank you. Gosh. Whew. You know, um, the way you just put those words together like that, I mean, that is one of the most amazing gifts. I mean, it it just blew, it, it, blow, it really blows me away how you did that. But, um, and I'll tell you something too. Every, I'm real sensitive to like uh, like when you speak the whole time, like you could kind of see me moving my shoulders and stuff. Well, the electricity <laughs> that was and the vibration that was going on within me and the elect I, I, I start to feel this electricity all over my skin, everywhere. And I mean, it feels like all, every hair on your body standing up, you know, and it's like, yeah. And, uh, and when you speak, I feel it. <laughs> I mean, and that's what I like. I, I want to feel something, you know. I want to feel, have the experience. And uh, so uh, maybe just to encourage you a little bit, you, when you, you speak, I, I believe people are feeling it. Thank and, you. Uh, and they're encountering. And, and that's it's my scary. honor. It's my absolute honor. I saw the languages as a personal love letter to me. And it's huh. to everyone. But when I saw that it was written to me about me and for me, the revealing of me through source mm -hmm. creator, I realized that this was what I was being called to do. And the other portion is, is I saw how it has broke my heart so many times where I would see this beautiful, beautiful love letter being twisted and turned and made into something that it is not. Mm -hmm. I would see these beautiful words about our becoming, and then they would be twisted into fear in a way to control and manipulate people's hearts. You know, especially like the verse where it says that our heart is deceitfully wicked. Mm -hmm. It says the heart's melancholy, and that is a far cry from being deceitfully wicked, because if you can get people to question their very own heart, <laughs> that's where all the answers lie. So if you if you can tell them that their heart will deceive them, then it's going to make them seek an outside source for the answers. And we know that that only goes so far until you get into that cry of desperation of Yeshua, where you're crying out for help because you know that you're a sinking ship and your head is just about to go underwater and you need to be rescued. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. drives you within and the heart will not lie to you. Nope. Only the mind, only the ego will do that. Trust when it's that. afraid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially hey, I, when we go to and urge and prick it and say, <laughs> I am really messing with you, buddy. Because really, what we're trying to do, okay, so I told you about to, to be able to get the full, the cup of the oil, right, to connect to the power of our heart. The whole thing about what you do and what my attempt is doing through the language is get to the ego to move aside so that the ego is no longer the master. It's a beautiful servant to our heart. Yeah. Yeah. And because when it sits in that position and allows the heart to lead, then guess what? The oil can flow through us. Guess what? Christ can flow through us. Yes. Because the ego is always going to stand in the way. The ego is going to make it about me. The ego is going to make it about here. Look yeah. at me instead of look at we. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, I, you know, you were bringing up um, the word, and I, I could probably just wrap up things with this, because um, um, anyway, I saw that through the Strongs and stuff, and and just through encounter, I, I saw that Jesus, the very name Jesus the Christ, to me, and, and the way it's been revealed to me, means to become the Christ, to be the Christ, and 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 I and I also see the Christ as the anointing. And, and the projection and the image and the you very unique expression of our one being that is you or me. So there was only one Jesus. There'll never be another Jesus. There was only one Jesus. He was Jesus. There's only one me. There'll never, there's never been another me. There'll never be another me. There's only one me and I'm very unique and I have a very unique purpose and I have a very unique passion and destiny and it's all been written right here in my heart. And, and for you and for everybody watching this. And so I see in the very name, if you did really dig down into, into it, you know, you get to that, I think, what is it? YHWH or something, YHVH in a way, whatever that is. But it, to me, it's the feminine and masculine together as one. Within yes, me. exactly. And exactly. you also get this, this other word, um, I forget what it is now, I've got it written down, but it means to deliver. Exactly. So, yep, so so the two becoming or realizing that the two are one delivers. And then- Exactly. And then when you get down to, um, all the way down to, and you drill down to the very root, because I was told that the truth of all things is the origin and source of all. Exactly. I'm so glad that you said that. That's why we drill all the way down to the root. Yep. That lump of clay that's full of potential. Yep. That's right where it's starting from. Yep. Yep. And and so, you know, and so I need to get down to the origin and source of all things. So that's how I can say all things are their source and 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 the source is all things. And then you say, well, Beautiful. Who's, the who's the source of all life? Well, it's the one and all. You the just one. described Oretta. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's what I was telling Dale. I never got around to that. That's what I was telling him. I was like, man, it's the weirdest thing, but I see everything that you've been talking about. And I've seen it through these scriptures in English and Greek and, and Hebrew and somehow I've seen it. And, you know, so it can't be hidden, uh, you know, and, but, and so if you dig down into it, I think you get to this word hava that means to become. And in the very name, it means to become the, very unique expression of the one that you are to be that yes and 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 so that's why i like to teach the encounter and how to turn and drop down within and experience the one that that you are because if if that yoga sutra is true the seer the one who sees reality as it truly is because if the one is all things all things are true it's my vision that's been distorted. So I need to establish the one who sees what's true because the, in the pure in heart see all things as pure. It, the pure in heart, the pure heart, which is us, sees our one being as all. Exactly. And, and you know that word hava also means breath. breath. It's it, he, vav, he. The oh, wow. revelation what get ha what happens when you connect to your heart that we are all one boom yeah. Hava. the there mystery of the many who are one yep 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 and and you know the, the cool thing about it is is because ultimately i think the the sole purpose of me you could say as a, as a member or an individual um that's a member connected to all things and everyone is to be that one expression that I am, the Christ. Yes. With one. And and it's so it's the one idea of the one and only being as Alec, Alexander. And then on a collective scale, you could say that the, the purpose of visibility or all of humanity, um, I even go further than that. I say all all things, but the purpose is to bring forth the one idea of the one. It's, 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 to, it's to, to, to birth that, to bring it forth, to reveal that, unveil that. Exactly. Uh, because, because it already is. Exactly. And, and, but that can't happen until each member 
turns within and remembers, you could say, that unique expression that each are. That's so good. And, yeah. And so, you know, for, for everybody that, that, that's listening, each person is a very unique expression of the one. Not just you and me, every person. And not just every person, every animal, not just every animal, every plant, every tree, everything. All. 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 And when we see this, because nobody ever taught you not to harm yourself. And nobody ever taught me not to go grab that knife and cut my finger off. I naturally know that. And if I naturally know I am all and connected to all as one, I would not harm another. Exactly. It's peace on earth. Exactly. That is Le Or Shalom coming down. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's it. That's it. We can land the plane on that one today. Drop the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for saying that and declaring that. I come in agreement with you. We Thank are you. birthing Le Le Or Shalom, and it is one person at a time. And the more that we speak, the more that we share, the more that we can continue to urge, goad, incite, prick, sting. We're doing it for the intention of revealing who we truly are, all as one. And I appreciate you greatly. I love you. I love everything that you're doing. I can't wait to see what you post. And um, I look forward to having more chats with you. Same here. Love you too. This was awesome. It's been an I honor. It. It's been an yeah. honor. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom.